Okay, let's talk about this sketch. My idea for this study was to create the first initial layer for the portrait in Alla Prima, but using chromatic and high key pigments. So as you can see, my palette is from left to right. Let, let's talk about it. I have King's Blue, I have Lead White, Lead Tin Yellow, Yellow Ochre, Chrome Yellow, Transparent Red Oxide, Senior Red, Alizarin Crimson, mm, the blues are Cobalt Blue and Cerulean Blue, and the greens are Chrome Green, Viridian, and Antique Green Earth, which is Terra Verde. You can also see two pigments on, on the right, there are Van Dyke Brown and Raw Amber. And my darkest pigment here is Van Dyke Brown, which is, as you know, not really dark pigment. So the idea is to is using the quite chiaroscuro reference with a dark background, but trying to paint using mostly high chromatic and high key pigments. I was using two types of medium here. Uh, to the right, you can see in a small jar, I have painting medium number five from Rublev. You, you will find the link in the description. And I've used epoxide gel medium mixed with my lead white to increase the viscosity of it and um, just for and to make it dry even faster by the way the the white which i use is flake white from old holland the the darkest the darkest mixture i mixed just using two, two complementary transparent darks in this case uh, there are Transparent Red Oxide and Viridian. I, I highly recommend to mix these two pigments, or you can use Transparent Red Oxide and Ultramarine Blue to mix a uh, really dark and transparent pigment, but you, but you can control the temperature of it. So if, if you add more Transparent Red Oxide, it will be more brown, and if you add more blue primer, in this case it's Viridian, it will be cooler gray, cooler dark gray so uh, in this case you have a lot of control over your darks so starting from very simple blocking uh, I I don't think the likeness is my goal here so I take some liberty to just to enjoy my painting the process and just mixing the colors you see that uh, I've made a choice about the background in where, on very early stage and I wanted background to be way lighter than I see it on the reference and with the, you see with a gradation of different temperatures because I'm going to cover this background later on, on the second stage of this painting but I will leave some of underpainting visible and it will create additional vibra vibrancy to the piece. So if, if you want to paint along, uh, just uh, be sure that you paint thinly. Do not throw too much paint in the first layer. But if you do, it's not such a big problem. I will show how to, how to make it possible to paint over it. Uh, the second, the, the medium on the right, the uh, painting medium number five from Rublev, uh, it's a fast drying, fast drying alla prima medium, consists of walnut oil and turpentine, so it, it adds just slightly more shiny finish, and the paint, the the layer will not sink in so heavily as it would be with just using mineral spirits, but. Uh, if, if you don't have such medium or you don't want to, to mess around with it, you can just use any type of thinner like mineral spirits, gum salt, and so on. Here in this stage, uh, what, 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 I, what I'm trying to do is I want to cover all big shapes of the head with, uh, with appropriate values. But I keep these values, I want these values to be slightly lighter than I see them because I keep my second layer in mind. I will cover this first layer with a second layer and second layer will 
be more unifying, more like glaze type of layer, finishing layer. So it, it makes a lot of sense to have the first layer slightly lighter in the lights. So I, I will be able to build the illusion of, uh, of the skin, of the texture of the skin using the layers of paint and part of the, of the pigments of the, in the first layer, for example, in the forehead, will still be lighter than the rest. So it will help with the general illusion of the form. The same goes with the color. For this exercise, I want the colors be more powerful, more brighter and more chromatic than I see them on the reference. Because the second layer, I, in the second layer, I will just make them look more proper, more unified. But this, this is one of the uh, one of the main approaches to to colorful skin representation. Uh, if we talk about likeness, uh, you see the, the lower part of the head is slightly longer than it should be, especially the chin. But for me, I try to focus on the relationships in the triangular, in the triangle of be between the eye sockets and the nose in, in that area. Because if, if these relationships are okay, it will be way easier to fix the lowest part of the, of the face. So for me, the most important is the distance from the bottom of the nose to the uh, top of the upper lip than the rest, because I can just move lower part of the chin slightly higher and achieve the result which I need. You, you see how it is developing now in the skin tones. More red, a lot of red uh, now in the cheekbone area, but the but the forehead is very yellow. So I try to separate this uh, yellow band and the red band and the blue band of the face. So it's for me it's it's some kind of a declaration of this of the colors. I want them to be really vibrant here. So if, if you want to practice such approach, uh, try, try to use chromatic pigments. So you, you, you see, I have three types of yellow, even four if we, if we consider transparent red oxide as orange. I have two types of red, warm red and cool red. I have two blues, warmer and cooler, three greens and additional, additional colors like uh, Van Dyke Brown and Roamber. Raw amber I use here mostly for unification because if I sense that I went too far with the separation of the colors with the chroma, I, I can add the earth, earth pigments into the mixture and just make it more unified, more harmonious. Another, another thing to consider here is that I, I tried to use my brush work to, Im to imply some texture in the hair, to create the gesture of the beard, the gesture of the hair, to, to, help, to help with the general um, representation of, um, of material in this case. I believe that the best paintings, they have optical effect not just sculptural or drawing effect. So I want, I want this optical feeling of different materials, different textures and different planes of the head. And one of the, the ways to show, to show the optical difference between the materials is to use of edges. And in this stage, I don't care much about the edges, but I, I keep in mind that I will, so I just try to keep all the edges relatively soft and just achieve the effect using using different application of the brush. Like in the forehead, you see the the highlight area with the yellow there. I use some kind of zigzag movement of the brush strokes 
because I want to show the general gesture and the tilt of that very important plane of the forehead, which is facing the light mostly. So I, I, rec I recommend to, to experiment with the expression of your brushwork. Try to, try to apply brush differently to show the different gestures and the placement of the planes to express the tilt and the perspective. It is similar to, to hatching and cross-hatching in drawing. Because when we draw with pencil or with ink, we can hatch across the form or following the form to achieve different effects of gesture and tension. It is very similar in the brushwork. The brushes uh, which I use for this stage, there are mostly rounds and long filberts, but with very small size. And that is why I like long filberts so much, because I can use different sides of the brush and, uh, and achieve different results. So I can use one brush for broad brush strokes and the same brush for, for very pointy, very thin thin looking brush strokes. By the way, the size of the panel is rather small. It is something like 20 by 30 centimeters. Uh, I like to work this size when I just want to play around. It is a kind of a sketch or small compositional or color study. But if you feel more comfortable working larger, yeah, just feel free to work larger. It depends. It depends on personality, depends on studio equipment, on many, many things. Also, uh, for me, I just like to, to use less pigments and use smaller brushes. And a uh, smaller size of such sketches helps me to finish the stage in three or four hours. So I don't have to Oh, to force myself to rush to finish to finish this before it's it is dry so it is kind of organic size for me okay and now almost everything is already there and you you see that uh, now i have to spend more time to fix my mistake in the lower part of of the head it is why it is why it's so important to be precise in the beginning but even if you are not if something is off you can always fix it just uh, the most crucial the most important things in construction are the center line relationships the overall symmetry of the of the head the big shapes especially the relationships between the nose and the eye sockets and the rest is just a matter of uh, rendering and time Now I apply more darker, darker mixtures inside of the eye socket because when I squint, I see that eye socket is very dark in the corner. And you see on top of the yellow base, which I've built like in the first, in the first stage of this cage, I apply now cool mixture using King's blue and lead white mostly to create the effect of cool light first and to, to increase the turn, turning of the form, to increase the three-dimensionality of the form. But at the same time, using colors, I create vibrancy because blue and yellow, they're near complementary in, in this case. So if you apply blue, lighter blue on top of the yellow, it will look even more pleasing, more vibrant, and it will have effect of something which is in the light. Effect of the skin reflecting the light source, but being at the same time semi-transparent, because the skin is never opaque. This is very important thing, this is very important concept to understand that skin is always translucent. 
And our goal as painters, at least as it is how I see it, is to create a, an illusion of the skin. And we can use transparency of oil painting as a medium, the textures, transparency and different brush application to achieve this illusion, to achieve this optical effect of the skin. So looking at the palette, uh, you, you, get, you can see now how I organize my darks and lights. I try to keep, uh, I try to, to do it very in very logic way. I try to keep my lights to the left and my darks to the right because most of the light value pigments they are on the left side of my palette and the dark pigments are on the right side so it's very natural for me just to, just to mix things uh, separately and it helps and it helps with the with the general you know like helps not to contaminate the mixtures and keep my colors quite fresh and good looking so the, the, the first layer is almost done. Everything is very thin now, very wet. And if I need to, to fix something, as you can see, I can just move around, just yeah, fix here and there, especially when it comes to edges now and maybe a little bit drawing issues. But the, as I said in the beginning, the goal, the main goal of this exercise is the rendering of the color, the understanding of the properties of the light and trying to build the painting, the illusion, using, using mostly this type of palette, very chromatic and high-key high palette. If, if you want to, to do the same to paint along, I will post the full-length video, the stream recording, you you can you can watch it with sound or without sound you can watch it you you can increase the speed of it or you can watch it real time you can paint along very welcome to do it if you have any questions or any suggestions please leave leave them in comments and also i would like you to share with me uh the main obstacles you have when you work in Alla Prima. What is the main issue? Is it the drawing? Is it the mixture? Is it the way how you organize your process? I will, I will make more videos covering different obstacles for Alla Prima painters. And just keep in mind that Alla Prima can be just the beginning of the portrait. So you don't have to finish everything, but you have to keep in mind what you are going to do in the next stage of the painting. So thank you for watching and I wish you happy painting.